What is up media makers? Thank you so much for diving in to this After Effects tutorial with me. In this tutorial, we are making some clean and modern titles here in After Effects. And I think you will be surprised to see that um, the techniques in this tutorial are actually pretty simple. This is nothing too complicated. Um, so I'm actually excited about this because it looks so much more complicated than it actually is. Um, so without further ado, let's dive in and see how to actually make this. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is um, create a new composition. So what I'm going to end up trying to do is recreating this. So I'm just going to go to a uh, new composition button and just rename this tutorial. We're going to make this 1920 by 1080 and I don't want this to be 10 minutes. So let's just make this like 10 seconds and hit OK. Alright, so we have a 10 second composition and the first thing that I want to do is create our first rectangle. So we're just going to kind of eyeball this. So I want to make this kind of a purple shade. So we'll make it like that. That's fine. So we're going to eyeball the uh, width of this because I wanted to say tutorial in there but I'm not sure how big that's going to end up being. So we'll just kind of wing it. Um, Okay, so that's probably at least close. We can always change it later. Um, but I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to click um, and then hit enter and rename this to main shape. All right, so now what I want to do <clears throat> is add some motion. So as we can see, this starts out coming from the bottom left corner and comes into place. So I'm going to um, hit P on my keyboard and keyframe the position and move about two seconds in time and um, hit another keyframe. Now I'm going to go back to my first keyframe and move this down. So let's see what our movement looks like here. So it's a little slow so I'll bring that in to maybe closer to the one second mark. That's probably a little bit better. So what I want to do is I want to easy ease both of these. Um, that makes this a little more um, kind of glide into place instead of just stopping like a robot is how I always kind of interpret it. It just stops immediately. There's no it, there's no slowing down. So what that's what Easy Ease does. So I'm going to select both of these, right click and go keyframe assistant, Easy Ease. You can also hit F9 because that's a little bit faster. So if we click this, we can see that it looks a little bit more of a natural movement. Now the sucky thing about position and Easy Ease is I can't really adjust um, how fast things move. So in our graph editor normally we can come in here and we can speed up the beginning of the animation or speed up the end or slow down whatever but in position we can't do that. And there's actually a workaround with that. Um, if we just right click on position and go to separate dimensions we can actually start affecting that. So now if I go ahead and click the green which stands for my Y position and I drag this uh, straight to the left and drag this one straight to the right. What that's doing is it's making it go slower at the beginning of the animation and then much faster and then slower at the end. So we're going to try to replicate that on this red one. So what we want to end up seeing is this purple line or this blue line right here end up going straight. We want this to be a straight line. So if we pull this one this way and then this one this way we're going to try to get as close as we can to just getting a straight line, which that's fairly close. So let's take a look at this. There we go. So that's kind of my illustration for things starting out really slow and then increasing in speed and then slowing down towards the end of their animation. Um, so I'm actually going to bring my work area down a little bit so I can see this repeat. There we go. That helps. All right. So we have the basic animation of my main uh, shape there. So what I want to do is kind of create the echo, the uh, white spot, the white part uh, back here. So what I need to do to go to that is get out of the graph editor and uh, duplicate this. So I'm going to select this later layer and go to edit and duplicate. So I'm going to drag this new layer under and call it echo. And if you're unfamiliar so far, all you have to do is uh, click the layer, click enter, and that helps you rename. So now we have our echo layer. So I'm going to um, actually go into my position and um, get rid of my keyframes. So before I move my playhead, what I want to do is parent the echo to the main shape. I don't want the echo to have its own uh, keyframes. I want 
whatever the echo does to parent what the main shape does. So if I decide I want to move the main shape, I don't have to go back into the echo layer and uh, move all of those properties and keyframes as well. It's just going to follow my main shape. So I'm going to pick whip this up to the main shape. So let's hide the main shape, click the echo and change the fill. I'm going up here and clicking fill and changing that to white and clicking OK. All right, so that is what's going to end up being our back echo here. So what we need to do now is go into our um, effects and presets, go down to time and just click echo and drag that onto our echo layer. So what that does is it kind of creates a, um, well, what you would call an echo. It basically adds a second version. Now we can add more echoes. Now if we go up to our effect controls, we can see that it's only adding one echo, but we can add as many as we want. But before we get any farther, I kind of want this to want to make this a little bit of a darker color. So we'll go with something like that. So now that we have that, I want to go up to my effect controls. And the thing I want to do first is go to echo operator and make this composite in front. So that will make our original layer in front and all the echoes fall behind it. So this is our original layer. And actually we can turn on the main shape now. So that covers that up. So that's our original layer and then we have the echo to follow it. So I want to just increase the number of echoes. So the number I found that works is like 85. So it's a lot of echoes. So obviously that's not what we want this to look like. So what we actually have to do is go to echo time seconds. So uh, the larger we make this, the more distance in between the echoes that we see. So if we just click this, the number I found that works, and you might have to play with this a little bit depending on your composition size and the shapes that you're messing with, but the number that um, I found that works for this example was negative 0.002. So now if we scrub back in time, you can see that this just looks like a solid line here. We're not seeing um, the individual echoes. So now let's go ahead and play this. All right, so very nice. So one thing that I'm noticing is in this example, in this tutorial one, I'm noticing that the movement of my shape is a little bit faster than the original, which ends up making this tail, so to speak, a lot longer than it was in our original um, composition. So we can go ahead and play with that by clicking the echo and just decreasing the number of echoes. Yeah, so personally, I think that's a lot better of a tail length. All right, so we've got the basic structure of this made. Now what we want to do is add some text. So what I want to do is simply go up to the text tool, click on our composition, and type in tutorial. So now I'm just going to hit my move tool, bring this into place. You can play around with the, um, the character font and size and stuff like that, but I think that's going to work. I'm just going to change this to a little bit of a lighter color more white but I think that that's going to work and one thing that I do actually want to do and more so just to show you that this is possible is resize um, the main shape so this fits the tutorial just a little bit more the tutorial text so if I resize this you can see that our echo is also resizing because we parented the echo layer to our main shape layer so when we adjust our main shape the uh, echo one follows along. So let's just move this tutorial into place a little bit better. All right, I think that's, oh, my bad. I gotta finish the animation first. So I think that's going to fit very nice. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is add just a little bit of movement to the text. So, so I'm just going to hit P on my keyboard, add a keyframe here, add a keyframe here, go back in time a little bit and uh, push this back so now I want to add easy ease so I'm just gonna hit F9 for my shortcut to add easy ease maybe adjust these keyframes just a little bit all right I think that's gonna work so now all we have to do is add that mask so what I want to do is parent my main shape layer so I'm going to do command D or you can go to edit duplicate and drag our main shape to above the tutorial. 
So now I want to just rename this so I can say like text mask. And then I go to my track mat right here on my tutorial on my text and go to alpha mat text mask. So now what that's saying is wherever this text mask is, that's where I want my um, tutorial text to show. And one thing that I do want to show you because it's very important is you got to go into uh, your text mask, hit P for position, get rid of those keyframes. Same thing we're doing for the echo, we did for the echo, and um, parent this to the main shape. That way, if I ever need to change where the main shape is, I don't also have to change it in the text mask layer. So everything that the main shape layer is doing, um, the other layers will just follow. All right, so basically, if I wanted to go ahead and make a second one for my AE, all I would have to do is go ahead and duplicate all of these. So I'm gonna hit U to close that up, and I'm going to just do Command D. So I'm duplicating all of these and dragging them above. So now what I wanna do is just select our main shape, hit P for position, so I select all of these, and I'm actually going to go to one of our keyframes. So I'm going to hit my arrows over here on the left side and make sure I'm directly on one of our keyframes. Make sure they're all selected and drag this down. So I'm going to hold shift to make sure that this is lined up perfectly. And I want to line it up so we don't really see a gap in between both of them. All right, so that'll work. So I'm going to make sure my shape layer is selected and drag this side in and then go to um, one of our keyframes by hitting these arrows, make sure they're all selected, and just drag this to the other side. Again, holding shift to make sure that this is all lined up. There we go. So now, um, one thing that I'm noticing is we left the text up there, which is fine because it's not parented to our shape layer. So all we have to do is hit P, make sure we are on one of the keyframes again, select both of them, and just drag this down. So then once that's dragged down into place, I'm gonna just change that to AE. Again, make sure both of the keyframes are selected. Because if I don't make sure both of them are selected, if I just make if I just select one of them, it's going to not go in the direction that we want it to go. Alright, so the last thing that I want to do is kind of reposition where the um, the second box comes in. So all I have to do is select my um, second set of graphics here and just move this back in time just a hair. And one thing that I found works is making sure that this top purple line is lined up with the bottom of this white line. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. So I'm just going to move this back in time just slightly and we'll get this as close as we can. That's pretty close. All right, so let's uh, fit this to the screen and try this. And obviously the last thing I did was add a background so all I did was drop a image in the back and I just scaled it up and add, added some movement to it. And it's as simple as that. That's what we end up with. So guys, I hope you got something out of this tutorial, whether you're looking to create something that's exactly like this, or if you're looking to just create that kind of echo effect, or just kind of learning about masks and layer masks and stuff like that. So whatever it is, I hope you got something out of this. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this tutorial. If you like After Effects tutorials, go ahead and click that like button and check out other After Effects tutorials that we have here on Forge Media. On Forge Media, we look to eliminate your obstacles so you can embrace your creativity. So if you're interested, at all in that consider subscribing because we have a new video every single week if you've got any ideas for after effects tutorials please just go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below i would love to hear from you guys thank you so much for watching you guys and i will see you in the next video